The ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, operates on two assumptions. Number one, that the gas molecules have no forces of attraction to each other. And number two, that the molecules of gas inside the sample have no volume. These assumptions are valid under normal conditions, normal pressure, and normal temperature. Under those conditions, even though the gas molecules do have attractive forces and they do have volume, their attractive forces and their volumes are very small, so small that they are essentially insignificant and we don't need to take them into consideration when we're doing calculations using PV equals nRT. In this video, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the, um, the conditions under which each of these assumptions is no longer valid. We refer to this as deviating from ideality. And I'm also going to talk about how each one of these types of deviation affects the variables in the ideal gas law. And then last but not least, we're going to look at this equation, the van der Waals equation, which is what we would use when we can no longer use PV equals nRT due to some sort of deviation. So first, let's talk about the gas molecules having no attractive forces. This assumption becomes invalid when we are under the conditions of extremely low temperatures. So we're not talking like regular low temperatures, we're talking very, very low temperatures. As you know, as temperature decreases, all of our molecular motion slows down. That is true also for gases. So as our temperature decreases, our gas molecules are moving more slowly inside their container. And this means that they are striking the insides of the container with less force, and they're also striking them less frequently. In addition to temperature having that sort of effect on, on the behavior of gases, what we also observe is that as our gas molecules are moving around inside the container, so let's draw two molecules in here. As these molecules are moving around inside the container, when they are moving more slowly, they do spend more time in each other's vicinity as they are moving past each other. And when they spend more time in each other's vicinity, they are able to get a little bit of time where they are experiencing these real attractive forces that exist. So when the gas molecules have an opportunity to spend more time near each other and they can experience these attractive forces, this causes the gas molecules to slow down even more. So they're being slowed down by the low temperature and now they're also being slowed down by their attractive forces becoming kind of significant. All of this has an effect on how often the gas molecules collide inside the container and also it has an effect on the force at which the molecules collide inside the container. So this type of deviation has an effect on the pressure of the gas. Well, second, we have this uh, assumption that molecules have no volume. This assumption becomes invalid when we are under conditions of very high pressure. When we're under conditions of very high pressure, we got there either by decreasing the volume of the container or increasing the temperature of the gas sample or also just increasing the number of molecules of gas that are inside the container. So let's say that we did this by increasing the number of molecules of gas inside the container. Now, when we're assuming that the gas molecules have no vol volume, we're not really assuming that they have no volume. The assumption that we're making is that the volume of our gas molecules is insignificant relative to the volume of a container. Because for most samples of gas, the um, inside of a gas container is mostly just nothing. You know, there's not a whole lot of molecules inside there. So if the gas container becomes very full, either because we've put more molecules of gas in there or because we've shrunk the size of the container or something like that, when the molecules um, become large in quantity inside that gas container, the volume of space that all of these individual molecules occupies actually becomes somewhat significant relative to the overall size of the container. So even though there is still some empty space in there, there's just not as much as there used to be. And the size of the amount of space that these individual gas molecules occupies actually becomes pretty significant relative to the size of the container. So when we're under conditions of very high pressure, no matter how we got there, this deviation always has an effect on the volume of a gas. That is, our assumption that the volume of the container is mostly empty space no longer becomes a valid assumption anymore. 
The van der Waals equation, which is the equation that we use in the place of the ideal gas equation when these equa assumptions are no longer valid, the van der Waals equation has these two terms built into it that correct for each one of these types of deviations. So this term right here corrects for deviation from pressure due to very low temperature, and this term right here corrects for deviation of volume due to very high pressure. The van der Waals equation has all of the same variables in it as the ideal gas law. It has pressure, it has volume in here a couple of times, it has moles in here a couple of times, uh, three times. It has the ideal gas constant R, which is exactly the same as you would use it in PV equals NRT, and it also has T. The van der Waals equation also introduces two new constants, A and B. These are constants that are in these corrective factors. So A and B are what we call van der Waals constants. And something that is unique about van der Waals constants relative to R is that they are specific to each different type of gas. So whereas R is just 0 0.08206, no matter what gas you're using, the van der Waals constant A and B depend completely on the gas. And this is because van der Waals constants are, effect, are, are correcting for actual attractive forces, which depends on the gas molecule itself. And it also corrects for actual volume, which depends on the actual gas molecule. So the van der Waals constants are um, specific to the type of gas for which we are calculating. If you need to use the van der Waals equation, you can look up the values of A and B in a table of van der Waals constants, um, or typically the values of A and B will be provided for you. Other than that, you'll use the van der Waals equation the exact same way you would use ide the ideal gas law, meaning that of the four variables, pressure, volume, N, and temperature, you'll know three of the four variables, and your task will simply be to solve for the fourth, whichever one that may be.